let's get things started with Cut from 2000. It's one of these movies that's uh, about a group of film students who attempt to finish a horror movie that stopped production years earlier when the director was killed, and any time the film is brought back, the killer from the movie also comes back to stop it. So this is an Australian movie. I've seen it back kind of when it first hit cable. So I saw it back around 2000, 2001, somewhere around that time. And I remember feeling it was somewhat enjoyable. I mean, it wasn't a great movie, but it was um, it was entertaining. And so this is actually the first time I've rewatched it since then. And I had fairly similar thoughts. I, I thought it was still okay. I, I, I thought it was somewhat entertaining. But at the same time, I don't think it ever got to the point where it would make my repeat playlist. So it's not the type of movie that I think I'll come back and watch again every few years or anything like that. But it, 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 was, it was okay for what it was. So I've seen this uh, once before, let's say between five to eight years ago. Um, and I apparently gave it a six out of ten back then. And I'm not sure what I was doing, why I gave it the rating, but it definitely doesn't deserve that. I don't get that frustrated out that afternoon watching movies, but this movie just annoyed the hell out of me. There's so many things in this movie that bother me. One of them, they never really explain why this movie is caused. Is it simply because a guy just murdered somebody else during the making of the movie? It's not like the director was a witch or something, it just... And never went into any detail about why the movie was caused. More to the point, <laughs> once we figure out that, and I, let me just spoil this for like 30 seconds. Once we figure out that the killer isn't anybody in the cast, it's literally just from the movie. I mean, that just, it annoyed me and it didn't make any sense to me. Isn't it the actor from when they first made the movie? Is it? Is it like a spirit of the actor for some reason? Yeah, I mean the the guy. The, it looks like the guy who killed the director at the beginning of the movie. If it was, they either should have made it more clear or should have made it make more sense. Now this small thing. <laughs> this a uh, quote in this movie. They're having sort of like a meeting before they go make this. There's a quote by one of the characters that says they want to make this movie. Uh, let's see, bigger than Halloween. Creepier than Friday the 13th, and more blood and guts than the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Um, <laughs> that quote, that, that That's single... That's just marketing. <laughs> yeah, that single quote pissed me off. Um, one, bigger than Halloween. <laughs> I mean, I'm not sure if Halloween was a particularly big movie in this trailer, but, you know, I think most people know it. <laughs> then, more blood and guts than Texas Chainsaw Massacre. The first Texas Chainsaw Massacre isn't a particularly blood and guts gory movie. Much of the violence is implied. Well, see, then, the, that's kind of a true statement, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> mm, if you look at it that way. But I'm, I'm pretty sure that's not what they were going for. It came across at times like the movie was being made by um, horror fans. You know, they talk about like maybe the positive aspects of horror movies. But it just, this just bothered me. And again, I don't think it particularly made much sense. Um, I do like the like, the concept, and I'm not sure if you're familiar. Uh, this is a movie from 2008 called Midnight Movie, which I actually thought was enjoyable. It's not great, but it's an enjoyable little slasher. Um, it has a somewhat similar concept to this, but that one did like think so much about it. This one, I guess, is like a horror comedy, but most of the comedy is. You could easily watch this movie and not notice the comedic aspects. I, I don't know, it just... This was not an enjoyable time. When you were bringing up quotes, I thought you were going to mention that one girl who says something about Bride of Chucky 7. <laughs> well, well, that actually annoyed me too. It might have been funny if it was like Bride of Chucky 2 or 3, but again, I, I forget which character said that, but <laughs> it just... it's. Most horror fans know this, just, you know, one brad of Chucky. Mm. I, I, I just small things like that, you know, if that individual actually... I mean, Children of the Corn reference would have been funny, because 
you could say, oh, there's 666. It just fell flat with me as much as this movie did. Yeah. I mean, there are, there are a few quotes or moments in the movie that I thought were kind of amusing, but, I mean, no, nothing you'd go back to watch again just for those things. Like the moments where that one guy says to the girl, oh, I always found you very attractive, and she's just like, oh, fuck off. <laughs> And, um, I mean, I, li- I like the moment in the movie where the killer kind of waves by to the camera, to the guy filming it, just before he kills him. But yeah, there's not... I, I wouldn't say there's anything too memorable in the movie itself. Probably... <laughs> e- earlier in the film, I- and I think this is actually when they were originally making the, you know, the movie within the movie, there's a scene where the guy attacks... Uh, I think it's Molly Ringwald's character, or, you know, wh- when she's acting in the movie, and he he grabs her from behind, and she's immediately saying, oh, what do you want? Do you want sex? Do you want sex? Uh, and, and, I mean, well, if that was me, I would have been, oh, hell yeah, <laughs> let's take these pants off. But, yeah, the fun- the funny thing about Molly Ringwald in the movie is she's obviously the American star power not just in the film, but also in the film within the film. Yeah. Um, which is kind of amusing, but... I this thing about her where... I've, I've seen her in a bunch of different movies, and in some movies I have literally no interest in her at all, and then in some other movies I think she's alright, and she's, like, fairly decent, so... I don't know what to think of her in this movie, but I, I guess it doesn't matter, because the movie itself, it, like I said, it's, it's just not memorable, it's it's... Uh, to me, it's watchable. It's it's okay, but it's not it's not special. Yeah, and actually, I just remembered another small gripe of mine. Uh, so one of the characters, and I won't say who, but one of the characters in the movie is the daughter of the original director who was killed back in the eighties. And this character has a line about you know wants to prove the whole mother's movie was more than just some quote unquote hockey slasher. The one scene that we see from the original movie, you see it a few times uh, in the screening section. It literally looks like a terribly generic, made-for-TV 90s thriller movie. It looks like a terrible movie. And also, the name of the movie is Hot Blooded. I, I mean, that's, <laughs> um, there's some bad slasher movie names from the 80s, but I've never seen a slasher with as bad as the name as Hot Blooded. So I'm not quite sure what this individual is talking about because based on everything we saw from that movie, it looks like it was probably a good thing it wasn't finished. Mm. Plus, the, the, the whole design, what, what was the quote-unquote antagonist's name? Skalman or something like that? It was Stitch... Stitch... Stitch something, I can't, I can't remember. Anymore. I know. The design looked like a really terrible Friday Krueger. It, it, it just... It, it didn't have like anything going for it. The weapon choice was interesting and I'll give the movie some credit and this is where most of the points are coming from. I think a lot of the kills are decent. I think they're amazing but I do think I think they're okay. Um but most are the aspects of the movie. More than anything else just annoyed me. I I didn't really have too many or too much issue with the mask in the movie. I, I I think you know for the most part it's a, it's 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 fairly generic, but I guess it's consistent. Yeah, I I, I thought it was okay. I, I I didn't think it was a bad look for a killer. It just once again it's just not special. I would say this is, in my opinion, at least movies I've seen, um, probably one of my least favorite post stream slasher movies. And, you know, of course, a lot of the big ones being, like, Urban Legends, or I know what you did last summer. You know, in that maybe four to five year range after Stream came out. Uh, this one just, it just felt somewhat generic and definitely pitiful, in my opinion. Okay. <laughs> and, and that comes from a big slasher fan. Okay, well, just to sum up everything that I've been saying, I found this movie to be, you know, watchable, but not memorable. The killer in the movie's okay. I, I didn't really particularly like towards the end where they started adding the effects of his face going all weird uh, as they kept trying to kill him. But it was alright. It's not going to make my um, regular playlist, but 
Who knows, I might give it another watch in another 20 years. I'm going to give it a 6 out of 10, and you can fight me. <laughs> well, to each their own. I, I, I thought the movie, I guess, like you said, to sum it up, I thought it was pretty horrible. The one good thing it has going for it, like I said, is the kills, and it's not like they're amazing, they're just decent. Did it care for any of the characters? Did it care for the occasional humor? The story I thought was really pissed poor. And I didn't even talk about the ending. When this, after they defeat the evil, there's another training. And then he comes back. Oh my god. Yeah, I gave this one a 3.5 out of 10. Rounded down to a 3. I, I legitimately did not have a good time with this. Which is a shame because, like I said, when I first saw this movie, I apparently thought it was okay. -ish. But rewatching it did not live up to my beliefs. So, 3 out of 10. The, the one thing about this movie is that it, it felt very Australian to me. Like, a lot of more recent Australian movies, unless you were told they're actually made in Australia, you might not immediately pick up on it. But this is a movie where, like, the accents and everything really come through to me as rather Australian. So, I guess, um, well, <laughs> if it was any more Australian, the movie could have been called Can't. <laughs> Some quality Australian humor. 